Okay, the prophecy of Habakkuk then comes from the early 600s BC. And Habakkuk's big concern, really, he bursts on the scene with this huge concern, the injustice of it all. No, we know about that, don't we? We can look out on our world and we can see things that we look at and we think, Lord, just do something about this. Injustice, violence, and it affects him. He feels it. And he cries out to God. Now, <clears throat> Habakkuk is an Old Testament prophet. And we don't know much about him. We don't know much about him at all. Very little. He's, he's just a voice for God. That's what we know. It's all sorts of speculation, but that's what it is. All we know is this guy is there speaking to God. But the way it goes is it's like this big dramatic dialogue that goes on. It's like literature teaching us stuff. It's very good. Well, very good. It's very hard. Hebrew, right? Uh, it's, it's structured and it's put to, It's very clever, carefully done stuff. But there's like this dialogue going on between Habakkuk and God. And out of it we're learning things about how to deal with the world we live in and the, the life we face. We don't know the extent of Habakkuk's experience of the Spirit of God. What we do know is this. Jeremiah, who's a fairly, pretty much a contemporary of Habakkuk, writing about the same times, he talks about what will happen when God breaks into all this mess that we have to contend with. And he says, God says, through Jeremiah, I will put, I'll, I'll, I'll put a new spirit with you, I'll give you a heart, a heart of flesh. You're going to have a new heart. And the blessing of the new covenant is that your old heart of stone is going to be dealt with and you're going to have a heart transplant and you're going to be given a heart of flesh. A heart that's going to feel in ways that it didn't before. It's going to be sensitive to God and it's going to be sensitive to the world that you're in. And, and we see this when people are converted. I use an old fashioned word there, but you know what I mean, don't you? When people become Christians, right? When they're converted, when they're turned round, what's converted is their heart. And you're given a new heart. And that heart is going to be sensitive to things happening. Sensitive to God, sensitive to things happening in the world. And you're going to say like Habakkuk from time to time, Lord, why? How long? Now, it's not such an irrelevance to us, this book, is it? Habakkuk looks out on his world, his world, his people. His time, his government and its institutions, and he sees it falling far short of God's ideal for society and for the people of God, and he complains to God. Just as many of us see things happening in our world or in our country, and we want to turn to God and we want to shout, foul! So does Habakkuk. But he does it within the spirit of prophecy and the presence of his God. And there's something to learn there. If you're going to cry, do it on your knees. The best possible place to die. If you're coming apart, do it in the presence of God, in the presence of God's people. Habakkuk can teach us a lot just from the outset. Here's how it goes. Here's how the book goes. And it's like in two panels. It's like two things happening. Here's the dramatic dialogue. You see how I've tried to give you a little diagram with it on? Do my best. It's on a sort of a papyrus background. Do you see that? A nice little note. Well, I'm just pointing it out in case you didn't see it. There it is. Habakkuk's first complaint. There's the first thing. Chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. And then chapter 1, 5 to 11, God responds to that. And then what happens then? Chapter 1, verse 12, to chapter 2, verse 1, Habakkuk makes his second complaint. He says, what? Okay. And he goes again. And God makes a longer response. Quite a lot longer. And by the time Habakkuk has met with God in this dialogue, this back and forth, not on the basis of any reason and rational <coughs> explanation, but on the basis of having met with God in this. God heard him. God heard his complaint. God dealt with him told him his own heart and what he's going to have to do on the basis of that trans transformed Habakkuk. 
a transformed man, having met with that God, worships in awe and wonder the God who does things we don't understand.